So in carnitine deficiency, what you see, there is a decrease in the blood levels of carnitine, increase in long chain fatty acids in the blood. So increased levels of carnitine in the blood along with increased levels of long chain fatty acids along with the dicarboxylic acids, that is CPT1 deficiency. Hey everyone, Dr. Mugli here. In this particular video, I will be explaining you carnitine deficiency. Now let's see what all these carnitine deficiency disorders. Carnitine deficiency can be classified into primary carnitine deficiency and uh, secondary carnitine deficiency. Now the primary carnitine deficiency is because of a mutation in a gene coding for a transporter that is SLC22A5. This SLC22A5 uh, transporter, it is a carnitine transporter in our body, so which is allowing transport of carnitine into the cells. Now, liver is the one which is synthesizing carnitine and it is called, it's a predominant organ which synthesizes carnitine and then it will be transported to other tissues. So, SLC22A5 transporter is important in, you know, for the tissues to utilize this carnitine. So, if there is a mutation in this transporter, that is SLC22A5 uh, transporter, that will cause primary carnitine deficiency. Now, what is secondary carnitine deficiency? Secondary carnitine deficiency is secondary to some other disorders like liver disease. In liver disease, carnitine biosynthesis is decreased because carnitine is synthesized from lysine and methionine in the liver. And if there is a hemodialysis process, if the person is undergoing hemodialysis because of renal failure, chronic renal failure or acute renal failure, there is loss of carnitine in the hemodialysate that can lead to carnitine deficiency. Or deficiency of essential amino acid like lysine and methionine because those are the two amino acids which are used in carnitine biosynthesis. So the deficiency of lysine and methionine can lead to secondary carnitine deficiency. Now what do you see in this carnitine deficiency? Whether it is primary carnitine deficiency or secondary carnitine deficiency, what are the major signs and symptoms that you see? As the name says carnitine deficiency, so the blood levels of carnitine it will be decreased in carnitine deficiency, whether it is primary carnitine deficiency or secondary carnitine deficiency, blood levels of carnitine will be decreased and along with that there will be loss of carnitine in the urine. So increased carnitine levels in the urine and uh, decrease in the blood levels of carnitine because SLC22A5 is not allowing this carnitine to go into the cells. So overall there is a carnitine deficiency. Because of this what happens? What else you are going to see in carnitine deficiency? Biochemically. So the carnitine it has got a central role in the transport of long chain fatty acids from the matrix of uh, from the cytoplasm into the matrix of mitochondria for beta oxidation. I have a video on carnitine shuttle mechanism. The link for that video is appearing at the end of this particular video and also it is there in the description. So the carnitine it is helping in the transport of fatty acyl coe, long chain fatty acyl coe into the matrix of mitochondria for beta oxidation process. So whenever there is a decrease in carnitine, whenever there is a deficiency of carnitine, that means this fatty acyl coe it will increase here and it will go back into the cytoplasm and in the cytoplasm so it is going to be converted into fatty acid because CoA is released and this fatty acid can appear in the blood so it will get into the blood. So blood fatty acid levels will be increased and also these fatty acids especially in the endoplasmic reticulum so they can be converted into triacylglycerol. So these fatty acids can will be accumulated in the cells itself. So appearance of excess levels of long chain fatty acids in the blood decrease in carnitine levels in the blood, appearance of carnitine in the urine and also signs and symptoms of carnitine deficiency like skeletal myopathy, so the weakness in the muscle, uh, uh, pain in the skeletal muscle, cardiomyopathy, cardiac enlargement, cardiac manifestations of um, carnitine deficiency and also patients with carnitine deficiency will have hypoglycemia and low ketone bodies or no ketone bodies. So, hypoketotic hypoglycemia or non-ketotic hypoglycemia along with skeletal myopathies, cardiomyopathies along with the decrease in carnitine in the blood and elevated levels of long chain fatty acids in the blood will give you a, a diagnosis of carnitine deficiency. This can be seen in primary carnitine deficiency, it can be seen in secondary carnitine deficiency.
Now let's move on to see uh, what if there is a deficiency of CPT1, carnitine palmitate transferase 1. I'm going to take out all these arrows now. So carnitine palmitate transferase 1, if it is deficient, consider this enzyme is not working properly. Mutation in a gene coding for CPT1, carnitine palmitate transferase 1, present in the outer mitochondrial membrane. What this enzyme does normally? It is going to condense this carnitine with fatty acyl CoA to make fatty acyl carnitine and then it is going down into the matrix for beta oxidation process. If there is a defect in this enzyme, that means fatty acyl CoA is not condensed with carnitine. So that means this carnitine will be coming out into the blood. So carnitine levels in the blood will be increased. There will be increased carnitine levels in the blood. And also this fatty acid, fatty acyl CoA will increase here and that will come, come into the cytoplasm. There is increase in fatty acyl CoA which will go into fatty acid and fatty acids will appear in the blood. So, appearance of long chain fatty acids in the blood along with increased levels of carnitine and accumulation of tract, tax, triacyl, glycerol within the cell. So, and beta oxidation will be decreased because carnit uh, fatty acyl CoA is not transported into the mitochondrial matrix and decrease in beta oxidation will give rise to hypoglycemia and lack of ketone body synthesis under fasting and starvation. So, giving rise to hypoketotic hypoglycemia, increase in carnitine levels in the blood, increase in long chain fatty acid, acids in the blood, along with the signs and symptoms of skeletal myopathy, cardiomyopathy, cardiomegaly. So, hypoglycemia signs like seizures, uh, tremors, this kind of signs can be seen in uh, CPT1 deficiency. So, what is the difference between CPT1 deficiency and uh, primary carnitine deficiency? The difference is in primary carnitine deficiency or carnitine deficiency, carnitine levels will be less in the blood, low in the blood, whereas CPT1 deficiency, carnitine levels will be high in the blood along with uh, elevated levels of long chain fatty acids and of course along with uh, uh, non-ketotic or hypoketotic hypoglycemia. Now coming with uh, our second enzyme that is CPT2, carnitine palmitate transferase 2 enzyme. What if this enzyme is deficient because of a mutation in the gene coding for this enzyme. Now the deficiency of carnitine palmitate transferase 2 enzyme. So what this enzyme normally does? It is going to condense, see this fatty acyl carnitine, it will be taken and it will be attached with CoA to release fatty acyl CoA and release carnitine molecule. So if this particular enzyme is down, so if it is not working, so your fatty acyl carnitine here, it is not converted to fatty acyl CoA because your enzyme CPT2 is not working. That means there will be accumulation of fatty acyl carnitine here in the matrix of mitochondria. And this accumulation of fatty acyl carnitine can be toxic to inner mitochondrial membrane. That means this fatty acyl car uh, carnitine, it is going to change the permeability of inner mitochondrial membrane and it will appear into the intermembrane space. So this fatty acyl carnitine in the intermembrane space, so it will again appear, so back into the cytoplasm and so we will have fatty acyl carnitine here and this fatty acyl carnitine it will get into the blood so blood levels of fatty acyl carnitines will be increased blood levels of long chain fatty acyl carnitines will be increased in carnitine palmitate transferase 2 enzyme deficiency so CPT2 deficiency so there is increased levels of fatty acyl carnitines in the blood and also some of the fatty acids can go into omega oxidation and become uh, dicarboxylic acids. So in uh, carnitine deficiency, CPT1 deficiency or CPT2 deficiency, you will see dicarboxylic acids. They don't really uh, help in the uh, differentiation of carnitine uh, CPT1 and CPT2 deficiency. What differentiates is, so in CPT2 deficiency, there is an elevation of long chain fatty acyl carnitines. So long chain fatty acyl carnitines will be elevated in the blood whereas in CPT1 deficiency there is elevation of long chain fatty, acid, fatty acids uh, but there is increase in uh, carnitine also whereas in carnitine deficiency there is increase in long chain fatty acids but a decrease in carnitine. This is all about uh, carnitine deficiency. Let me just uh, put, put it all together. So, first thing is carnitine deficiency. Primary carnitine deficiency, secondary carnitine deficiency. Primary carnitine deficiency is because of a defect in uh, a carnitine transporter SLC22A5. 
Secondary cognitive deficiency is because of uh, liver disease, it may be because of hemodialysis or it may be because of deficiency of essential amino acids. So in cognitive deficiency what you see, there is a decrease in the blood levels of cognitin, increase in long chain fatty acids in the blood. And now in the CPT1 deficiency what you see, so you will see elevated levels of fatty acids, long chain fatty acids in the blood and also you will see increased levels of carnitin in the blood because carnitin palmitary transferase it is not using this carnitin so carnitin will appear in the blood so increased levels of carnitin in the blood along with increased levels of long chain fatty acids along with the dicarboxylic acids that is CPT1 deficiency in CPT2 deficiency so fatty acyl carnitins are elevated long chain fatty acyl carnitins are elevated in the blood and there will be decrease in the quantity levels because already they are consumed and there will be elevation of long chain dicarboxylic acid. So whenever you see elevation of fatty acyl quantitin that is in CPT2 deficiency or CAT deficiency whenever there is elevation of only fatty acid you are only with quantitin and CPT1 deficiency. How to differentiate it between CPT1 and uh, quantity deficiency? Look for the quantity levels. If the quantity levels are elevated along with the long chain fatty acids it is a CPT1 deficiency if carnitin levels are low but there is increase in long chain fatty acids that is carnitin deficiency. I hope this video has helped you in understanding uh, carnitin different types of carnitin deficiency. If you have any questions so put that question in the comment section below and also make sure to click the subscription button so that uh, you get regular updates whenever I make this, uh, this kind of videos and also make sure to check my playlist. So maybe you uh, you will find uh, some of the videos that are useful to you. Thanks for, for watching and uh, see you in my next video. Till then you take care.